Okay, the first thing you want to do when uh, you're installing a solar water heating system when it comes to actually charging the solar water heating system, uh, actually here we're showing you the, uh, the fill port and the drain port. You need to have a fill port and a drain port and they need to be separated by a ball valve that you can isolate or at least a check valve. Um, that's some fast unscrewing of that uh, expansion tank plug and basically what we're showing you here is all expansion tanks come preset from the factory to either either 40 uh, either 12 psi or 40 psi depending upon the nature of the expansion tank this one in this particular case was preset to 40 psi and what you want to do before you chart before you charge your system you want to you want to change the pressure in the expansion tank to match your desired cold system fill pressure with any glycol solar system you're going to have a bucket filled with glycol you're going to have a hose from that bucket filled with glycol that's supplying your transfer pump a hose on the outlet end of your transfer pump that's going to the charging port of your solar uh, of your solar collector system uh, the, the transfer pump is going to force the fluid in, into the charging port up through the collectors and then back through the drain port into the bucket the first step in charging the system is actually priming the pump so we actually fill the hose going to the transfer pump with fluid and then you're ready to go. Uh, once you've opened your ball valve on both the supply and the drain side, turn the pump on. What you'll see is you'll see the level in the, in the, in the, gly the, level of the glycol solution decreasing in the bucket as the glycol is pushed into your collector loop. If you look at the hose on the right, you see the transition of color from the pink glycol solution to the white and pink foam solution. You can see that transition in the bucket as well, where you're actually forcing the air out of the collector loop into the bucket. If you continue to let your charging pump run for a couple minutes after, or a couple minutes after you've done this, and what you're seeing is you're seeing the foam actually build up in the collector bucket. If you're using food grade propylene glycol, the food grade propylene glycol will not have an anti-foaming agent in it. Since it doesn't have an anti-foaming agent in it, it will take you a little while of letting the, uh, letting the bucket sit without any agitation in order for all the, uh, all the foam to come out of solution, have the, uh, the foamy glycol rise to the top, and then ultimately the foamy glycol will kind of uh, dissipate over time. As you can see here, the foam on the top of the glycol is a very light layer, so this it's ready to turn the pumps back on again. With the pump turned back on, you'll see the glycol with uh, foam in it start to transition through the bucket again. And uh, you can actually see the color change in the return line from the collector loop. Um, it's just a matter of repeating this procedure multiple times. Uh, generally, you're talking about four or five times before the system should run clear without, uh, without the foaming going on in the bucket. One thing you want to ensure when you're actually running with a single bucket solution is you want to make sure that your return line from your collector loop is not directly feeding your supply line to your collectors. You don't want to have any foam that you're taking out of your collector loop turn around being re-injected back into your supply line to the collector uh, for the collector loop. So this, so this could be a situation where multiple buckets might make it a little bit easier to get the foam out of solution. Once you've run the system several times so that the glycol actually pumps through clear and doesn't generate any foam, the next step is actually going to be charging the system. And in order to charge the system, you use the same transfer pump, same bucket. You just close your drain port. With your drain port closed, you turn the pump on, you charge it up to your desired system pressure, which is 25 PSI in this particular case. Once you've charged it up to 25 PSI, you close your fill port, uh, unhook your hoses, and you're done. Once you've fully charged your system with glycol, uh, once you've allowed the system to run for a little while, what you'll notice is uh, even though you've done an excellent job eliminating air in your original charging of the system, 
the liquid's ability to hold air decreases with temperature. So as your system is heated up and cooled down and heated up and cooled down, it will accumulate air in the system even though you did an excellent job initially. And so in order to get that air out after it's been cycled several times, you need to have some kind of, uh, some kind of air release valve. This is a manual air release valve.